Danny from Seconds Out here with Joshua Greer Jr., top bantamweight, of course. How are you finding life at the moment with the ongoing shutdown amid the pandemic? Oh, man, it's, um, I'm a type of guy I just try to take the good, the good and the bad with the bad. Uh, I've been taking the good out of the situation, you know, uh, more family time, more time to work on myself mentally and physically. So, uh, I mean, it is what it is. Are you managing to keep training to any sort of extent? Have you got facilities in your house or, or locally that you can use? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Training every single day. That's good to hear. You you were supposed to have the biggest fight of your pro career so far, actually, this weekend, weren't you? Yes. Yeah, against um, uh, Jason Malone. I was looking forward to that in Las Vegas. Um, uh, sold out crowd. And uh, it was just, I was just ready for a spectacular performance. But I'm still I'm still training, and uh, my performance will be even more spectacular come the next day. Of course, you're WBO number one, or IBF number two. Was the plan always for the winner of yourself and Maloney to fight the winner of the main event between Noya Inouye and John Riel Casimero? Yeah, most definitely. That's definitely the plan. That's definitely something that I look forward to uh, in my career. It's definitely a fight that I want. What do you feel Maloney brings to the table from what you've seen of him? Uh, he's a very, uh, he's a tough fighter. He's going to keep trying and, uh, he brings, uh, you know, heart and grit and he's going to keep trying. So what sets you apart then? Is it the extra kind of versatility that you've got? Um, I mean, it's many things, uh, it's many things that the open eye can see and it's many things that the open eye can't see that, uh, sets me apart from him. But, uh, it definitely all show when we meet. And have you been given any idea of when that card could be rescheduled for? Uh, no, but I actually heard uh, I heard different um, ideas from uh, Bob Arum and stuff like that. So uh, basically, I think we're just you know waiting uh, waiting on the world to see what's what. And who do you like in that main event, um, Anui against Casimero? Because whoever wins is likely going to be your next opponent, or at least a future opponent. Uh, I will, I will, uh, I would like, I would like it to be, uh, anyway. Why is yeah, that? I, I, because I would like to, uh, I, I want to be the man to beat the man, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, I want that fight. I want that, uh, because once I win that fight, I'll be one of the best battle weights in history, pound for pound, one of the great fighters all overnight. So that's the fight that uh, I want. And I would like for him to win in a spectacular fashion and we meet. A lot of people out there at the moment seem to not want to fight in Inoue or at least wait until they see more faults in his game before they step up to the plate. You seem to be actively pursuing that fight. Does that say something about your character? Oh, yeah, it could say a lot. I mean, um, I, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people won't take chances in life. A lot of people won't do what I do or do what I've done. But uh, that's what makes me different. And uh, I dare to be great. And I'm going to continue to uh, continue on my journey and work hard to be who I want to be. For people who don't know too much about your backstory, just give us a little insight into your, your childhood and how you first found boxing. Uh, I first found boxing. I was uh I was just um, you know, going going up uh the wrong way in the streets of Chicago and uh I just had a, a different mindset, different way of thinking. Uh I had uh, you know, different role models, different things that were put in front of me. So that was the direction that uh I was taking and I was pursuing. And we all know with those type of decisions come um, consequences. And uh, those type of consequences, uh, I got real tired of. Uh, I got uh, fed up, you know, at a young age. I got real fed up with them. And I knew, you know, it was a reason why, you know, uh, I was going through hell because that wasn't the life for me. That's not the plan that God had for me. And um, once I found, bo found boxing, it's like, I just, because I always was a fighter since I was like a kid. So I've been born, I feel like I was born to be a fighter. But boxing brought the structure. Boxing brought the discipline and many other things in life that you need to go through to um, to get by. And uh, boxing brought me that. And I fell in love with it. Once I fell in love with it, it's just, I mean, it was over from there. Who first took you to the gym? My grandmother. My grandmother first took me to the gym. My grandmother and my mother talked it over. They said, uh, I had too much time on my hands. They said, um, you know, uh, we got to get them in some type of activity. And it was actually between karate or boxing. And it was going to be some type of combat sport because I like to fight. And um, it was a boxing gym down the street at the time. And I said, well, I always walk past this gym, walking to school. 
how about we try this boxing gym? Because every time I walked past that gym, I saw the ring. It was a big ring inside. It's like I, I was so fascinated. I'm like, oh my god, like that that looked, you know, wonderful. I want to, you know, be in the ring. So um, my grandmother actually took the approach and you know signed me up, got my physical, got me in the gym, got me with the coaches, and it was uphill from there. You um, lost your father, I believe, at an incredibly young age which can't have been mm-hmm. easy growing up without um, him in your life. Did boxing or some of the coaches, did that fill some of that void? Uh, yeah, definitely, man. Uh, you know, growing up without a uh, father, as uh, many, you know, guys in, you know, my community, my peers, you know, growing up without a father, uh, I mean, we, we we go about it like it's nothing, but it is uh, really a hard thing because uh, you don't have a role model. You don't have nobody to teach you how to be a man, not to do certain things and to live by rules, morals, and respect, you know, and, um, my mother, she worked a lot, you know, and a mother is a mother, you know, it's, uh, it's a different type of love, a different type of relationship. A father is definitely a uh, vital in a, a kid's life. And, uh, I think I got about when I became about, you know, 12 years old, I still, I really started noticing like, you know, like, wow, I don't have a father, you know, and, uh, I started going over my cousin's house. And um, which was my uncles, I saw how they were with their family. And, you know, it's just the little things I was like missing. I see my cousin uh, what, what, uh, ask my auntie for something. And he, she couldn't get it from the auntie, but she'll go and ask the father. So it's like, just like little things like that. It's like, you know, it kind of, uh, you know, it saddened me or whatever. And um, you look to the wrong people, you know, and as you have the wrong role models and, that's the route that I was going to have the wrong role models. And, you know, so definitely when I got into boxing, so I've been around, you know, coaches, guys that's inflicting structure. At first it was a different type of transition because I was never used to nobody, you know, uh, trying to, you know, inflict discipline on me or, you know, structure. so it was something that I had to get used to, but I had to know that they wanted my, uh, you know, they had my best interest at heart and they wanted what's best for me. And um, that's when I definitely, you know, I started, you know, really, gravitating towards, you know, um, positive men, you know, positive men that mean well by me. And um, it was definitely a, a, it was definitely a great feeling. Now you're a father yourself, of course. How, how are you finding that? Oh man, I love it. And and, and uh, I think it's so beautiful for me because growing up without a father, I would never want my kids to feel that type of, um, that type of void. So it make me be, you know, it may, it, it give me that extra push to be even, an even better father every single day. So it's a, it's a wonderful feeling. Now, your only professional defeat thus far was against Stephen Fulton. Very early in both of your careers, actually, you both had less than or fewer than 10 fights. Mm-hmm. It's quite refreshing to see two such promising prospects meet so early in their careers. Was there a story behind that? Oh yeah, uh, I was three and zero at the time, and he was uh seven and zero. And um, th- it was like maybe uh ten days before Christmas or something like that. Um, around that time, oh, no, it was maybe like ten days, maybe like two weeks before Christmas, something like that. So they called me with the offer, and they was like, "Uh, would you like to fight Seven Fulton?" And, and my coach was like, "Man, Josh, like, uh, you know, why not? I was just getting in the game. I didn't really understand too much about boxing. I was just making my transition from the streets into boxing." And I was like, you know, okay. Like, you know, they told me TV at the time. I'm like, okay, like, this is early, but let's do it. You know, I, I watched some video on him. I said, okay, yeah, I'll definitely fight him. And um, I, we went to Philadelphia. Uh, it was supposed to be a six-round fight. They switched it to a four-round fight the last minute. Then it was the um, swing bout. So it was after the whole event, no TV. Um, I felt like I dropped him in the fight. They called it a knock. I mean, they called it a slip, not a knockdown. And it was, uh, you know, after that fight, uh, Bernard Hopkins, uh, Hopkins coach, uh, Nassim Richardson, Bernard, uh, Barry Hunter, all those different guys and elite guys in the sport was like, man, they was just so impressed with me. I mean, everybody in Philadelphia was so impressed with me. And it's like, oh, you know, some of these people's coming up to me, oh, you want to fight? But I'm not that type of guy that, uh, you know, get a thrill off of, you know, people telling me I want to fight because there's no moral victories in uh, boxing, you know, either you win or you didn't, you know. and um, that, that that night I went home, you know, uh, unvictorious, and it really didn't sit well with me at all. It, it really just was a, a nasty, left a nasty taste in my mouth, and I didn't want that to happen to me ever again. Even though you didn't get the decision, the fact that he's gone on 
to remain undefeated and is now a highly rated super bantamweight, so the division above the one in which you're competing in, that must give you some positives to take from the from the fight. Oh, yeah, it's always definitely positives to take from the fight. He's a, a good fighter. i uh, definitely seen some of his uh, previous fights. Uh, he's he's definitely a good fighter, put on some good performances. So, I mean, um, yeah, definitely, you know, and that's definitely a fight that, uh, you know, that uh, if we can meet, you know, um, when the time is right or whenever we meet up in the same weight class, it'd be definitely a great fight. What are your main objectives in the sport, obviously beyond Inoue, Casimero, Victor and Jason Maloney more imminently? What are kind of the long-term goals? Long-term goals would just uh, create a legacy. My long-term goal is to be um, uh, more, more of a champion. I'm talking more like a public figure to, uh, you know, uh, shine a light on Chicago and help so many uh, broken kids and uh, broken families here, you know, bring so much glory back to the city, something like that we just seen in the last dance with Michael Jordan did for Chicago, something like that, you know, and I want to do it even better, you know, and I just want to, I want to show people, I want to show kids and people in the youth that if I can do it, you can do it. And uh, n- never hold no type of limitations to yourself, you know, no matter what people say. And I just want to uh, give that type of um, outlet to show just the same way Manny Pacquiao did for the Philippines. Not every Philippine fighter that's, coming, you know, from the Philippines, people got their eye on them, boxing promoters and everything because of Manny Pacquiao. I want to do that. I want to start something that these boxing promoters want to come to Chicago and look at these kids and, you know, be like, oh, that kid could be the next Joshua Jr. Or oh, that kid could be better. So that's what I want to do. I want to be a public figure and I really want to help. Well, that's a laudable aim and I hope you achieve it. Just before we let you go, people out there who are inspired by the kind of things you're talking about, want to follow you a bit more closely. How can they find you on the various forms of social media? So you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter uh, at Joshua Grid Jr. All my social media platforms is Joshua Grid Jr. Brilliant. Well, we look forward to seeing you again um, after all this madness is over. And um, we yes. hope the uh, Jason Maloney fight gets rescheduled as soon as possible. Most definitely. Thank you, man. Thanks for your time. Uh, thanks for your time. And stay safe, of course.